Shalom Selamat pagi semua Saya Sani Dan kami sangat gembira Berjumpa dengan Anda Dalam online service CSP Kami mengalu-alukan Kedatangan Anda yang baru saja Mengikuti kami Di online service ini Kami dari CSP menyambut Anda Dengan hati gembira Salam damai Tuhan Yesus memberkati Happy Sunday
saudara Sebuah sukacita untuk kita Jika masih diberi peluang Untuk menabung bagi kerajaan Tuhan di bumi Mari kita buka dalam Amsal 11 24 sampai 25 Ada yang menyebar harta Tetapi bertambah kaya Ada yang menghemat secara luar biasa Namun selalu berkekurangan Siapa banyak memberi berkat diberi kelimpahan Siapa memberi minum Ia sendiri akan diberi minum Sebelum kita memberi Mari kita berdoa Dalam nama Tuhan Yesus Kristus Tuhan kami bersyukur Tuhan atas kebaikan Anugerahmu Tuhan atas penjagaanmu Sepanjang minggu ini Tuhan Saat kami memberi ini Tuhan Kau berkati kami Tuhan Pemberian kami Tuhan Baik persembahan kasih Baik perpuluhan Tuhan Kau memberkati kami semua Tuhan Begitu juga Tuhan mereka yang tidak berkesempatan pada minggu ini Tuhan Supaya engkau juga Tuhan memberkati mereka Supaya mereka dapat memberi juga pada minggu akan datang Kami bersyukur, terima kasih Bapa, terima kasih Roh Kudus Amin Beliau adalah Presiden ICM Malaysia dan juga seorang pengusaha Perlu diketahui bahwa ICM Malaysia memiliki materi yang dikenal dengan Bible School in a Backpack Atau dalam bahasa Malaysia dikenal sebagai Sekolah Alkitab dalam Backpack Materi tersebut telah diterjemahkan ke dalam 12 bahasa Dan ramai digunakan oleh gereja bahasa Malaysia di Sabah, di Sarawak dan semenanjung Saat ini ICM mempunyai pelayanan di 10 negara Termasuk Asia, Asia Tenggara, Afrika dan sebagainya Selama 29 tahun pelayanan ini ICM telah melatih lebih dari 100 ribu orang di seluruh dunia Dan khusus tahun ini ICM telah melatih lebih dari 20 ribu orang Reverend Edwin Marsden juga sudah menikah dan dikaruniai dua anak. Saudara, mari kita sambut Reverend Edwin Marsden. God bless you. Good morning church. This pandemic may have locked down the country. It may have closed down the churches. But the word of God can never be locked down. So today... Even though the churches are closed, but the churches have multiplied. Now in every home you have church. And you could invite your neighbors to come to your home for breakfast or for lunch and in between. Hear the message of hope that we so desperately need in these hopeless times. Today my message is taken from Exodus chapter 3, verse 7. And eight. Exodus chapter 3 verse 7 and 8 The Lord said I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers and I am concerned about their suffering so I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them out of that land into a good and spacious land a land flowing with milk and honey Israel was in captivity for 400 years and the Egyptians ill-treated them and treated them badly and they cried out to God and God heard their cries and he sent Moses to deal with them with signs and wonders and God told Moses, Moses I have seen the misery of my people I have heard their cries and I am concerned and Moses I have come to rescue my people. Friends, today God is still seeing the misery of his people. He's still hearing their cries and his concern. And God says, I have come to rescue my people. Today 
God is here through the Holy Spirit. He's still hearing your cries. He's concerned for you. And He is here to help you go through this pandemic. Today, every day, we hear bad news. Every day, we want to know how many COVID cases there are, how many have died. We are concerned. Companies have closed down. Many have lost their job. Many are in despair. Many have also committed suicide. They say just within a year, more than a thousand of them have committed suicide because of the hopeless situation they may have been in. But friends, we know that we have got a great, big, wonderful God and his concern for you. And in this midst, in the midst of this time, know your great, big, wonderful God is your protector. Know the great, big, wonderful God is your provider. He hears your Christ's heart. He knows exactly what you're going through. And he will never leave you nor forsake you. But he will always uphold his children with his right hand. He has said, if we can feed the birds in the air, you know, in Matthew chapter 6, verses 31. In, 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 in Matthew chapter 6, verse 31, it says, if he can... Let me turn to it. It says, so do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things. And your heavenly father knows that you need them. He says you don't have to run after. Your heavenly father knows what you're going through. He knows what you need. He cares and loves you. Just as your earthly father loves you. Your earthly mother loves you. God loves you. And in verse uh, 33... Matthew 6.33, he says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be given to you. So what he's asking us to do in this time is to seek him first, is to put him first, and all things will be added unto you. So know that you have got a God who loves you, Especially in these times, it is so important to know that you've got a God who created all things. And he loves you and he is with you. In Numbers chapter 13 and 14, I'm not going to read it, but I will tell you the story. God brought Israel out of Egypt with great signs and wonders. He even departed the Red Sea for them. And he told them, I'm going to bring you into a land flowing with milk and honey. And he never promised them that they're going to be without problems. He told them, I'm going to bring you into a land flowing with milk and honey. You know, but the troubles that they went through, and after 40 days, they reached the doorsteps of the promised land, a land God told flowing with milk and honey. And God told Moses, Moses, I want you to select 12 men, the best from each tribe. And I want you to send them into that promised land to spy on the land. Is the ground fertile? Who are the people living in that land? Are the cities fortified? And he sent them out. And after 40 days, they came back. And they gave a report to Moses. Moses, it is true. The land does flow with milk and honey. But Moses, we have a problem, Moses. The people who live in the land, the Amalekites, the Hittites, the Moabites, they are giants. And it is impossible for us to defeat them. We are like grasshoppers to their side, Moses. It is impossible. Why did you bring us out to the desert only for us to be killed and our family taken as hostage? But Joshua and Caleb, the Bible says, had a different spirit. They said, no, God will fight our battle. Only do not displease him. But the people chose to hear the bad report. 
And because of that, none of them entered the promised land. Friends, today, who are you seeing? Are you seeing the giants that is around you? Or are you seeing the great, big, wonderful God who is in you and who is your maker? What you see, what you hear around you will terrify you. But always know that you have got a God who is in control of all things. He knows exactly what you're going through. So do not let the things that you hear, the things that you see, take control of you and put you in fear. The 10 Israelites were terrified with fear and they had to pay the price that they couldn't enter the promised land and die in the wilderness. But Joshua and Caleb, as I said, they had a different spirit. For 45 years, they were wandering in the desert. They never complained. Why do we have to pay the price and wander in the desert for 45, in the wilderness for 35, 45 years? They could have complained. No, they never let the wilderness experience consume them. They knew who their God was and they honored God in everything that they did. Today, friends, do not let the world and the things of this world consume you that you may not even enter the promised land. Don't let the news in this world consume you that terrifies you and makes you make the wrong decision. So friends, keep your eyes on Jesus. Fix your eyes on Jesus. He will open door and he will make ways for you. You know, in Numbers 24, We shouldn't be surprised at what we are hearing and seeing because Jesus spoke about it more than 2,000 years ago. In Matthew chapter 24, when the disciples asked him, when will you be coming back again? And Jesus said in verse 4, Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, claiming I am the Christ and will deceive many. Verse six, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you're not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Today, the last 10, 15 years, we have seen so many wars in the Middle East and so many the last 10 years fighting and rumors of wars even till today there are rumors of wars border clashes between India and China and friends all these things he says must happen and then he says there will be famines and earthquakes in various places today Turkey is on fire. Greece, parts of Greece Island is on fire. Floods in China, in India, in Europe. And as we look back the last 10, 15 years, you have seen that all these things has destroyed many people's lives and countries. In America, every year we have the hurricanes and the tornadoes the Philippines, and in many countries, we see these things happening more frequently today. And he says, all these things must happen. Today, famine. The United Nations Secretary General Ant Antonio Gorates said, 30 million people are facing famine today. 30 million people are facing famine today. And he says, at the end of 2020, that means at the end of 2020, he says more than 88 million people were suffering from acute hunger. And he's calling to set up a high level committee to address these issues. 88 million people are suffering acute hunger. Friends, we are in the last days. Jesus is coming soon. What must we do? 
in chapter in Matthew chapter 24 Jesus spoke about these things that is coming and will happen and must happen and in Matthew 25 he spoke about the ten virgins it says be prepared be prepared as we read I'm not going to read but I'll tell you the story of the ten virgins five were prepared they filled their lamb with oils but the other five they say he'll take a long time to come and they never prepared themselves and when the bridegroom came the five entered in but the other five couldn't enter in they went to get more oil they want to prepare themselves but God says I do not know you friends do not wait until it's too late. Prepare yourself today. Build this relationship that you have today. If you're a backslidden Christian, slide back to Jesus. He loves you. He will receive you with open arms. Do not be caught unprepared. And, and the Lord is calling us to come back to that first love. You know, when God spoke to the seven churches, in in uh, in Revelation chapter 3 only to one church he said you are faithful you were obedient in Revelation chapter 3 I will just read to the church of Philadelphia he says I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is coming, that is going to come upon you, upon the whole world, to test those who live on the earth. It says, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come upon the whole world to test those who live on the earth. But to all the others, Ephesus, the loveless church, Sardis, the dead church, Lodicea, the lukewarm church, he had a different story to tell them. He had to admonish them. To the church at Ephesus, they were, Ephesus is a cosmopolitan city. The Christians were busy and the Lord spoke to them. He says, I have seen your hard work. I have seen your perseverance, but there is one thing I hold against you. You have forsaken your first love. Come back to that first love. And today, friends, the Lord is calling us to come back to that first love and to do the things that we used to do. Yes, He has seen your hard work. He has seen your perseverance. But our work has taken away our first love. We are so busy with ministry. We are so busy with work and other things. Yes, we are Christians, but He has taken the first love away. He says, come back to that first love and do the things that you used to do. And today, we are called to be the light and the salt of the earth. Yes, it seems like there's a hopeless situation out there with so many people losing their job and thinking how to put a meal on the table. But we are called to be the light and the salt where the Lord has placed us. Why? Because we have the blessed hope. We have the blessed hope that we could bring to other people who are in hopeless situation. So what kind of image as a Christian are we portraying to this lost world? Today, more and more people are seeking for an answer. And friends, we who are in Christ have the answer. The question is, what are we doing about it? So in this period of time, my friends, draw close to him. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added unto you. And in these times, my friend, come back to that first love. Be prepared. Be the light and the salt where he has placed you to bring hope to those who are in hopeless situation to bring comfort to those who are hurting and to heal the sick in Jesus name. So thank you, my friends.
and God bless you and know that you've got a great big wonderful God who will not leave you nor forsake you but always uphold you in these challenging times. God bless you. Deklarasi gambar diri Dalam nama Tuhan Yesus Kristus Aku percaya bahwa Aku adalah ciptaan Tuhan yang sempurna Aku sudah ditebus dan diperdamaikan oleh Kristus Aku memiliki otoritas dan kuasa Dari penguasa agung Tuhan Yesus Kristus Aku sangat istimewa Aku sangat berharga Mulai hari ini hidupku menjadi milik Yesus sepenuhnya Aku dimateraikan dan mampu menyelesaikan mandat Tuhan Yesus sampai akhir Amen, amen, amen. Saudara, mari angkat tanganmu. Kini saatnya terimalah berkat yang dari Tuhan. Kiranya Tuhan akan menyinari wajahmu dan memberikan engkau kemenangan, damai dan sukacita akan menyertai hidupmu. Kemanapun kau melangkah penyertaan Tuhan ajaib dalam hidupmu. Dan kau akan dibawa Tuhan semakin naik dan bukan turun. Engkau akan dibawa menjadi kepala dan bukan ekor. Di saat engkau melakukan perintah-perintah Tuhan. Oh ya, yes, sampai berdoa dalam nama Yesus. Penyertaan Tuhan. Damai sejahtera Allah. Dan persekutuan dari Allah Bapa Putra Roh Kudus. Menyertai engkau. Mulai hari ini. Sampai Maranatha Yesus datang kembali. Haleluya. Amen.